this awesome little desert town called Tilkara. Ah, oh. oh. hola, <laughs> hola. That's what I get for not understanding Spanish. There's even their own little pina place here in Tilkara. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> after one hell of a journey, yeah. we are finally here at Hornicol to see the 14 colored mountain. And he came back and was like, how high are we? Because I can't breathe. Genuinely, when I first put these on, I was like, wow. Argentina! Hello! <laughs> it is really quite tough. <laughs> Altitude. It'll get you. Yeah. We're Craig and Kirsty, a full time travel couple sharing our adventures here on YouTube. We upload new travel content every week from different parts of the world. Right now, we're making our way through the entire country of Argentina and exploring everything it has to offer. If you enjoy seeing new places and real experiences, please subscribe and welcome to the adventures of Tide Not Travellers. Hey everyone, welcome to another video here in Argentina. If you saw our previous video, you'll know we are currently staying in the city of Salta and we hired a car last time and drove to the southern region and saw Cachi and Cafajate. Absolutely loved that road trip. It was a real adventure, beautiful scenery. So today we've hired another car and we are gonna head north of the city of Salta to see the Jujuy region. So before we do that, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see our adventures because we are about to leave Argentina and head to our second South American country. Really excited for that. Um, today didn't get off to the smoothest start though, did it, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a few speed bumps <laughs> yeah. on the way this morning. Yeah, so we're a little bit delayed. Um, we've got a four hour journey ahead of us from the city of Salta to where we're trying to get to today. We left nice and early this morning, picked up the car for about just after 8 a.m. And unfortunately, when we got in the car, it didn't start. So... <laughs> Sounds more like a very quiet steam train. So a um, really sweet guy from the car hire place came out and changed the battery because the battery was flat in the car, um, which is really sweet of him. But when he changed the battery, um, unfortunately, we noticed some corrosion. So. Not the best start to the day. The little Ford KA won't start. It really sounds like the battery's flat. So we kind of just thought it's just too risky. We don't want to head off like on a big road trip for two days because we we're going away for the night. Um, and yeah, so we unfortunately didn't have the little KA that we had originally hired, which was only 9,000 pesos. Um, he didn't have another car for us, so we had to go up the road. And luckily another uh, rental company had a car available for us. So it's cost us 11,000 pesos per day instead. So, you know, it's cost us a little bit more, but we're in a much nicer car. So what, what car are we in? Uh, we're now in a Nissan Verso. It's quite similar to a Toyota Prius, but it's not hybrid. Yeah, I just know. It's, it's comfy, it's big, and it's got a full working battery and no corrosion, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> and it's an automatic, which is a big plus for us. Yeah, Especially great. when driving up these mountain roads in the Andes. Yeah, so we're up in the Andes now. It's looking absolutely beautiful. This drive is also shaping up to be pretty good so far. But the issue with the car was not the only issue we had getting out of the city of Salta. Just as we tried to head off on our four hour route, we got stopped by some police because they had closed the road off that we were trying to take. So luckily the police went over really friendly and they helped us to figure out a new route. And we're finally on our way. So yeah, we've quickly just stopped off, grabbed a little coffee because after all of that, we needed it. And we're finally gonna go and see this north of Salta, Hohoi region, and all these beautiful Andes mountains. Let's go. We've just turned off of the main road and arrived at our first stop of the day, which is this awesome little desert town called Tilkara. And look at the map behind us. It's like a cute little triangle, just full of loads of people selling food in the streets and 
They really go with the desert theme here. Like Craig's so excited to see cactuses again. <laughs> Cacti. <laughs> there's cactus everywhere. It feels a lot like Kachi, but I think there's more here. And you can see really just cool. it's this very dusty, deserty, rustic little town. And you can see all these like whitewashed buildings with artwork over the side. It's really cool. Yeah. As with all these little towns, it's got a little plaza. We've even got a street named after Evita here. Um, from my understanding, it's a working class town, so that kind of makes sense as to why they uh, have a, a street named after Evita. Um, we are going to go and grab ourselves a little bite to eat from one of the street vendors just to save a bit of time because, as you know, absolutely we've lost time. starving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we've lost a bit of time today, so grab ourselves a quick lunch from a street vendor and head on to Humawaka. <laughs> yeah, but first let's check out Tilkara. There's so much more here than I thought. It's just on the map, like, oh, a little place called Tilkara. And they have some hostels so you can stay here as well. Yeah, check out these awesome little desert shops. Let's go and check it out. It doesn't take long after arriving in Tilkara to find some food. There's these little uh, homemade barbecues on the side of the road. Ah, oh, hola, hola. Everyone's so friendly. So we found these homemade barbecues just on the side of the road as soon as you arrive in the village or the town and uh, they sell tortillas. So we grabbed ourselves a couple of chocolate ones because not very many veggie options and Craig's a bit ham and cheesed out. <laughs> so <laughs> Massively. Probably, yeah, with a nice warm and chocolatey, so also only 200 pesos, so a nice cheap quick lunch on the go. <laughs> yeah. We've also got a tourist information centre just up there, so we're going to wander up and have a look. So I thought when I said chocolo that I was ordering a chocolate tortilla, but turns out it's like sweet corn and cheese. So, you know, that's <laughs> what I get for not understanding Spanish. But I'm just glad that it's vegetarian and it's pretty tasty. And this little pigeon certainly seems to want some, so I might let him have a little bit. <laughs> oh no, now they're all joining in. <laughs> taking a wander down the main high street towards the main square and already there's just plenty going on, places to get food, there's a hostel there to our right hand side and here in Argentina they love their signs yeah. for like the city and town names, uh, there's people selling things on the side of the road and just look at the style of the buildings as well. There's so much more here than I thought, I thought this was going to be a tiny town like the one we stayed in on our last road trip but there's a lot more to this place. You could stay here a few nights. There's like places to go for food, drink, cafes, little trinket shops, and just, yeah, the, the scenery from beyond the town. It's just mountains, it looks stunning. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be just a street with a few shops. This place. But look at this. A few bars and restaurants down yeah. there. If we had time, we would stop and have a drink, but we need to get going. This is just meant to be a little quick lunch stop. <laughs> And travelling through Argentina, you just see these long-range travelly motorbikes everywhere. Groups of people just doing a massive road trip through this country. So cool. It's big. <laughs> So we're now in the main plaza, the square, and there's little market stalls everywhere. So nice. So much more here. I know I keep saying it, but there's so much more here than I expected. Even a little dog lying really flat. <laughs> I love it when dogs do that. It's so cute. Love the relaxed atmosphere here in the main square as well. There's three little kids playing around in a homemade contraption <laughs> in the middle of the square. And there's all these stalls. Yeah, you can so buy colourful. various local things from. Yeah. It's really nice, you can get traditional clothes, there's like little 
key ring llamas that you can get. Yeah, we really want to buy some stuff, but we have to carry it around with us, around the rest of South America, so we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we definitely would. If we were flying home soon, we would be buying quite a bit here because it's really nice stuff. This is the trouble with having uh, limited baggage, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's still really nice looking around at all the things. Yeah. And if we saw something we really liked or something that we'd want to get for someone, we'd pick it up. I yeah. really want it. <laughs> yeah. like, We're right. trying to restrain ourselves. Yeah, yeah, there's been a few things we've picked up and been like, no, we shouldn't. little piña place here in Tokara. Those of you that don't know, it's like a folklore music and they have like traditional dinner and dancing. We've still yet to go to one, but we're gonna hopefully go to one in Salta in the city when we get back. But yeah, how cute is this one here? If we were staying here, I'd definitely check this one out. It looks so lovely and authentic and local. One thing's for sure, if you come to this part of Argentina, make sure you leave yourself plenty of time. It's even these tiny little places like Cachi and Tilcara and Café Jate, they have plenty to see. We could quite easily have spent one night in each of these places. Yeah. The reason we're not is because uh, of the car hire and it being so expensive. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really tricky and we're trying to keep costs to a minimum as much as possible yeah. um, so that we can break even. We're working and trying to pay for this so we're trying to squeeze in as much into our days as we can and obviously it doesn't help that we lost a couple of hours today because of the car hire issues so yeah and also the time of year means we don't have much daylight so it gets dark at like 6 30. yeah so, yeah <laughs> time is against us yeah and also it may look really warm i mean it's dry the sun's out there's clear blue skies but the air temperature is actually quite cool today yeah. if the sun wasn't out i mean i'd be too cold in just this t-shirt it's It'd probably I would, yeah. It's probably about 16 or 17 degrees, yeah. but like I said, with the sun being out, that makes it bearable. It probably takes it up to about 20 degrees. That was Tilcara, now back to the car. <laughs> After one hell of a journey, and I really mean one hell of a journey from Tilcara, yeah. we are finally here at Hornicol to see the 14 coloured mountain. Yeah, this is insane. <laughs> like 14 colours is just incredible. The drive from Tilcara to Humawaka is a normal highway. Yeah, that's fine. But then you turn off at Humawaka and you're on a, a dirt track for the best part of 45 minutes. It's about 20 kilometres and the ascent um, up the side of the mountain it's is that, crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but we're finally here and we can definitely feel the altitude. And when you get near to the top, you have to pay 100 pesos to enter through a gate. And then I asked them if there was a toilet, Banos, and then I hopped out to go and use the Banos. It was only then that I realized just how high up we were because I was out of breath just to go walk to the toilet and back. And then Craig jumped out and did the same thing and he came back and was like, how high are we? Because I can't breathe. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely feel pretty funny and I'm not sure the altitude yet. I'm going to go and check the sign over there in a second, but I'm going to spin around. It's cold up here as well. <laughs> it is really cold. Kirsty is justified for getting the rab out, that's for sure. Yeah, and once I... <laughs> I've got the right clothes, Craig was like, I need to nick your rab. <laughs> the view from here is incredible, but there's a hike down there um, so that you can get closer, which I'm going to do in a minute. But, and we yeah. made it with plenty of sunlight, that's the main thing. Now he's got to make it safely back after we've seen this. We've read the sign and can reliably inform you that we are at 4,340 meters. Yeah. So it's no wonder we feel a bit giddy. Yeah, especially <laughs> as you don't get any time to uh, acclimatize. Yeah, acclimatize yeah. to it. It's just like driving in the car, it's fine. And then the second you step outside, it just hits you. And yeah, like I said, I ran to the bathroom and back. And then it was only when Craig came back and said he didn't feel good either. I was like, yeah. I don't feel so well, <laughs> but it's amazing. And I really think that these incredible multicolored rocks look like multicolored shark teeth. <laughs> they they are, really do. The shape so, of them look yeah. like jagged shark teeth. I'm so glad we made it here. I really thought driving along that 18 kilometer pebbly, stony, dirt track. crazy dirt track <laughs> that we weren't going to make it. And we saw a car that was sadly pulled over with a flat on the side of the road. We stopped to see if he was okay, he was fine, but he was just putting a spare tire on. And I was really hoping that didn't happen to us. And I still hope it doesn't on the way back. Like, yeah, I can see why people do tours and take a bus here, because that road was not for the faint-hearted to drive on. But yeah, now we're taking a walk down to get a closer view of these incredible multicolored mountains. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, we're walking down. It's about a kilometer or two to the closer viewpoint. We've just got to the closer viewpoint and it just looks spectacular. It does give you a closer perspective. What we're looking at, it just doesn't feel real. All those sandstony colors. We're gonna stand here for a bit and just enjoy it. It looks really cool at this time of day as well with the sun slightly lower in the sky. You just get the shadows on the edges and the ridges of the mountains. It is amazing to get a better close-up view of them because I don't have the best eyesight and they are incredible but I still can't quite count 14 colours. <laughs> There's loads of different colours and they look insane but where's this 14 coming from? <laughs> it's called the Rainbow Mountain which you know there's seven colours in a rainbow, so I can count about seven, but maybe it's just different shades, I don't know. Or maybe it's different on different days. But either way, they do look like multicoloured shark's teeth. <laughs> it's awesome. If you do come here and you have enough breath in your lungs, it's definitely worth doing that little walk to get this bit further down. I say this, I've got to walk back yet. <laughs> see how we go. It's amazing how much more I can see when I put my glasses on. Maybe there are more than seven colours <laughs> after all. But yeah, genuinely, when I first put these on, I was like, wow. Now I can see what you've all been seeing all along. <laughs> The colourful phenomenon of the 14 coloured mountains was formed underwater around 600 million years ago. Over time various mineral sediments built up in layers which have now been exposed by erosion. This geological formation runs along the Andes all the way from Sol to Argentina through the Bolivian Altiplano and on into Peru. Something we really love about this place, besides how incredibly beautiful it is, is the fact that it's not over-touristic and due to the ancient Inca caravan road running through it, the whole of the Quebrada de Humahuaca region was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2003, which means this place has legal protection against environmental damage from over-tourism, so it should remain a true hidden gem. <laughs> Making our way back to the car park, and seriously, we haven't been told or warn that much about the altitude here, but seriously, it is really quite tough. <laughs> We're making our way back from the closer viewpoint 
to the car park and this is the the last few steps up to the car park but should probably shouldn't talk to the camera uphill but. <laughs> we were just saying you don't get time to adjust suddenly you just get out and you're at 4400 meters so but it's worth it yeah stunning you just stop and look the other way for a second to rest yeah it's deep oh, altitude it'll get you yeah it's okay when it's a gradual increase and your body can acclimate to it but recovery is quick though already i'm like okay can go now yeah <laughs> we're walking up this hill talking to the camera i can feel my heart's pounding yeah. now oh. it's good practice for base camp when we get there yeah the sun is going to disappear over that hill and it's going to get very cold up here but the we... drive back is not going to be fun as well yeah <laughs> yeah head out find some dinner and find somewhere to stay the night <laughs> we haven't got that any of that sorted yet <laughs> let's keep going yeah My fingers, my fingers are just about getting the feeling back in them. It is seriously cold out there. I'm really glad they have an ambulance with some paramedics here because I can see how often they would be needed. Like, just, I feel fine now, but genuinely, literally 10 minutes ago, when we were walking up that hill, I had to stop about four times and everyone else around kept stopping as well, which is quite nice because you turn around and see the view, but I've never had to stop so many times walking uphill such a short distance. Yeah, feeling good now. And now we're going to head back down the crazy road for another 45 minutes to an hour to Humuaka. After a scenic drive back and quick look around Humuaka, we decided to keep driving another 40 minutes back to Tilkara to stay the night. And we were so glad we did as we found ourselves a great gorilla for dinner. Join us next time after another night in the desert, where we head off on another high altitude adventure to the third largest salt flat in the world, Salinas Grandes. If you can't wait that long, head over to our Instagram at Tired Not Travelers, or for exclusive behind the scenes content, we'd love you to join us on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. If you saw our last video, you'll know that we are in Salta, and we spent our time to explore the beautiful region down to Cachi and what's the other place called? Cafajate. <laughs> and all the beautiful scenery there. Um, and 